like our plane is over. What makes you think so, Mac? We was almost late for this last, uh, shall I call it, engagement. Sure. But we did make it. And the job paid heavy sugar. I don't see anybody's got a beef coming. Well, sugar or no sugar, I'm tired of this racket. I'm fed up on packing this old music box around. Listen, Mac, that music box always did right by you. Always played the right tune at the right time. Yeah, and I got a list of credits to my name a mile long. Yeah, yeah, your, your press notices have been terrific. Why, they even called you a public enemy. Well, you know, the way the feds have been going in a couple of months, you're going to be number one. Yeah. Well, anyway, boys, I've been giving this a lot of thought. And being as we almost got nabbed on this last job, things are getting plenty tough. And we've got to scram out of here. Say, you guys ain't letting the depression get the best of you, are you? When things get hot, you want to scram, huh? Well, I ain't scramming. I'm staying right here. I said we're leaving. And for the good of all of us, we're leaving together. Now, have any of you guys got any ideas where we might go where there wouldn't be so many beefs? You hit it, man. When you talk about beefs, you're talking right up my alley. We're all going west. Said you could count me out. I'm sticking. I got some personal business to attend to. So. You've made up your mind you're going to leave us, huh? And there's nothing that we can do to make you change it? Absolutely nothing. I'm kind of fed up with you guys, anyhow. Well, if you've got to go, you might as well go the right way. Bye, old pal. Play, Don. No. No, Mac. You can't do that to me. I'll, I'll stick. I'll stick. You don't have to stick. I've changed my mind. Put that away. We're not going to play with those things in this town anymore. Get out. Oh, but boss, you, you can't deny me the privilege of knocking this guy off. Why, he's turned yellow. And when, when a guy's yellow, he ain't white. And Don had that music right up to the perfect pitch. I was just getting ready to give him a little synchronization. Yeah, my music killed him. Your music? Hey, boss, I resent Don's inference. It's, it's my good aim and it does the trick. Hey, can I help it if I can't kill a guy without music? So you need me. If I ever let you down, you'd be through with a killer. Oh, Don, Don, you wouldn't do that to me, would you? No. I'll always play for you. This business about going west, what's on your mind? Cattle, Mac. Cattle. You know how many cattle there are in this country? No. Well, it don't matter. But the big idea is that from now on, we're going to play sweet music to mama and papa cows. Get it? Oh, yeah. Say, Louie. You've hit on a great idea. We've been beating beefs here in the big town for years. And sooner or later, we're going to get caught. Because it's a sense that the government's going to get G-men after us. And whether it's a local beef or not, the Federals are going to nab us even if we don't cross state lines. You just about hit the spot. Hey, boss, you're going to take me, ain't you? You know, me and Don could sure do right by a couple of big cows. Say, there's plenty of those right here in this town. We don't have to go west for the kind you're figuring on. Oh. And we're going to give the ranchers the proper uh, protection for their cattle. That's your idea, isn't it, Louie? Sure. Play, Don, while we pack. Yeah, and don't play Dopey's theme song. Huh? You heard me.
I'm glad you guys made up your minds to play along with us. You'd be fools to overlook a bet like this. Good deal, all right. We'll work with you. Now, that's what I want you boys to do. Work together and I'll take care of you. Hey, boss, how about me working with him, huh? Forget it, Dopey. We'll use that later. Oh. Now, here's what we're going to do. We'll go out and shoot a few head of cattle. And tonight, we'll steal a couple of truckloads on the way to the market. Now, we'll keep this up for several days before we start selling our protection. Sure, we'll have those ranchers so scared they'll be willing to pay any price we ask. I'm sure of that. All of them have had some tough years. None of them can afford to lose many head of cattle. You're all right, Murray. And I'm going to cut you in right. So go on and beat it now. Keep us hep to what's going on. All right. Yes, Tim. Oh, I'm sorry to hear about it. No, there's nothing I can do. That's a local matter and must be handled by the local authorities. No, no, the federal agents couldn't enter a matter of that nature. Oh, don't be hasty. What's wrong with your own association? Yes, I know. But you can't do that. That'll be murder. All right, all right. Now, promise me you won't do anything drastic for a few days, and I'll see what I can do. I'll be seeing you. Goodbye, Tim. Yes, yes. All right. Get Blake. But, Chief, don't you think he's going to leave? Don't buck me. Get Blake. What's up? Blake again. Blake? Why, he's probably left town by this time. Well, if he has, it'll be that much tougher on us. Let's go. Say, Mr. Blake, you look like you're in a terrible hurry. Hurry? That's no name for it. No? Well, uh, why rush around the way you do? I'm getting out of this town while well, getting's good. Say, <laughs> you ain't getting any place. Oh, Mr. Blake. You ain't done nothing you shouldn't be doing, are you, Mr. Blake? No, no, I have a chance to make a getaway, and I'm breaking for it now. But you're coming back, aren't you? Not too soon. Not too soon. It looks like the cops are after Mr. Blake. If we don't find Blake, we'll get in plenty dust with that chief. I'll say. Now, still best it. By this time, Blake has hot-footed it out of town. Well, wherever he is, we've got to find him. I have a hunch we can find him at his old address. Let's go try that place. Where's Blake? Why, who wants to know? Come on now, did he say where he was going? Did he say who was what was did going? Did he say he was where he was going? Who? Blake. Oh, yes, yes. He said something about making a getaway. How long ago did he leave? Well, let me think. Now, this is difficult. I think about two minutes ago. He said he was going in a taxi cab. Something about a great getaway. I'll say he is. Well, I'll say he is, too. He just stuck me down the floor, and I think you'll find the front door broke. And not only that, I heard a crash going down through the banisters. This place is starting to be a madhouse. I wonder whether he's going to come back. 
We've just missed him. He must be in that cab that just pulled out. Let's get going and find out. How about romping on it, buddy? I got exactly five minutes to catch that train. We'll make it, boss. Hey, I think they're chasing us. I'd like to, buddy, but it's too late now. Say, hey, what's the big idea? Wait, you're a wanted man. That man called in. Send him in. Howdy, Chief. Hi, Blake. Certainly not going to let me get away, are you? That's your man, isn't it? Yeah. Say, you didn't have that an hour ago. No. Kind of rough an answer, weren't you? He asked for it. He stepped right into a cab door. You see, I was in a hurry. I figured something like this would happen. It always does when I start on my vacation. Well, Bob, I'm really sorry that I couldn't let you get away. Well, I'm getting used to it. But I do hate being dragged back. Well, if I hadn't dragged you back today, I wouldn't have seen you for two months. And I need you right now. Chief, you talk as if I was the only agent working out of this office. Just because I've had some luck bringing in public enemies doesn't mean a thing. Without the cooperation of this department, I'd be helpless. I myself am a little helpless right now. But I feel that you're the one man that can handle this situation. And you can combine that much-delayed vacation of yours by doing a very interesting bit of work down at my ranch. Ranch? Well, that's where I was heading for. I wanted to get down to my place on the desert and forget about criminals and work for a while. But this assignment does sound rather interesting. I didn't think you'd mind spending your vacation down at my ranch. Well, your place is probably nicer than mine. But I was looking forward to seeing my horse, Starlight. I hadn't had him out for a run for a couple of years. I remember the horse well, and to show you that my heart's in the right place, I'll see to it that he's shipped right down to my ranch right away. It's only about 200 miles from your place, and I'll find some good reason to tell my brother why the horse is being shipped over. I'd keep my identity secret if I was you, until you had things well in hand. Okay, Chief. When do I leave and what's it all about? You leave tonight, and it's all about an old racket that the boys are trying to work in new territory. You see, the protection boys have gone west. And they're persuading the ranchers to join their special protective association or their cattle might not reach the market. There's a few carloads have been missing already. And there's a lot of cattle been found dead on the range with bullets in them. Oh, just nice boys with playthings. Yes, too nice. The ranchers know who they are, but they can't pin anything on them. They're in favor of stringing them up and holding a trial afterwards. And the only way I could... Convinced my brother that he couldn't do that was by promising that I would send somebody down to help out. Now, Blake, it's up to you. Please? 
Oh, uh, pardon me, uh, but you dropped this in the rush. Oh, thank you. You see, I was so excited. I haven't seen this little fellow for a long time. Well, for a minute, I thought you were rushing for me. But I see you having a chance with a little cheek like him around. Is he yours? I wish he were, but he's only my cousin. I can tell you're a stranger around here because everyone for a hundred miles around knows little Bobby Hess. Did you say Hess? Yes. Do you know him? Why, no, not exactly. Uh, I understand he's a big ranch owner out here. One of the largest. Were you on your way out to see him? Well, I hadn't planned on it. But do you think there's a possibility of a stranger putting up out there? Looking for work? Oh, nothing like that. I'm just out here on a much-needed vacation. Oh, I thought if you could ride, my uncle might put you to work. Well, I can ride all right, but I wasn't figuring on working. What do you think, Uncle Joe? Was there room for him at the ranch? Well, Tim might be able to find room for him if he's willing to sleep in the bunkhouse. Well, I imagine I'd kind of like that. Well, let's get going. You have to ride in rumble seats. I've done that before, too. Jim Hess isn't accustomed to riding so hard, and Al Romero is a bad hombre. Don't you think us folks ought to get chased and get Tim a hand? No, we don't. And I ain't never dreamt this Claude Wallaber more than 15 miles an hour. I ain't going to start no new speed records now. According to the set of rules I got when I bought the car, the book says you mustn't drive it over 15 miles an hour for the first 500 miles, except in the case of extreme emergency. Well, this is an emergency, Uncle Joe. I'll say it is. Unless you open up the speed on this car and get me up to that Romero fella, I'm going to take the wheel away from you. Ha! There's you! You're one of them city wise guys, ain't you? Ha! I'll show you! Give her to them! What are we doing? Come on, bear down on it. Give her all she's got. That's what I'm doing!
No doubt you're looking for this fella. I'll say I'm looking for him. I don't know who you are, young fella, but you sure rendered me a good turn, and I ain't gonna forget it. Gene, it sure is good to see your smiling face around these parts again. It's good to be back, Uncle Tim. Have you met, uh... Uh, Blake. Bob Blake. Just coming out of the Depression, but with enough money to take a vacation. I hope you have room for a boarder. Boarder? Say, after what you just done for me, you're my guest. What's the matter, boss? A Romero here tried to get away with our payroll. Stuck me up just as I was leaving the bank. Hadn't been for this young fella. You'd have been minus your pay this month. That wouldn't have been so good. Want me to take him in? Yes, take him in, turn him over to the sheriff. I'll be in later. Make him walk. Walk? Why don't you spring him up right now? This idea of turning thieves loose is more than I can stand. Don't worry, the sheriff will take care of him. I guess he will. And then pretty soon he'll be turned loose on parole. Next time it'll probably be murder. Well, we'll take care of that when it happens. Getting away with the money was bad enough, but he almost got away with his horse. And he don't belong to me. My brother just had him shipped in. They call him Starlight. He sure is a grand horse. He and I are going to be pals. <laughs> I'd like to ride him again. I mean, I'd like to ride him now. Well, go right ahead. The privilege is yours. Oh, well, thanks. you men, we got to do something about these fellas that's been raising Ned with our stock. If we don't, we're going to be in a bad way. Well, it's all your own fault of waiting for Henry. When I was a young fella, if we met up with critters like that, why, we'd have cut their hearts out and fed them the buzzards. I wish you'd let me handle this situation. You got away, boss. My horse fell and threw me. Kind of knocked me silly for a minute. Before I could get my wits together, Romero had beat it. He did, eh? Well, that's a big disappointment to me. Romero's a bad actor, and he deserved to be punished. I told you so. I told you so. We should have strung him up and then took him to the sheriff. Pretty hard fall you had. It was. Lucky your horse didn't get hurt. Just what do you mean? Well, I don't see any cuts on him after such a hard spill. Look here, stranger. I don't know what your play is, but if you're making any hints, you'd better take them words back right now or else... Now, oh, now, boys, none of this. Murray, you'd better... I ain't aiming for no trouble, but no... <laughs> When I was a small boy, they used to put soap in my mouth to keep me from talking dirty. I'm sorry I had to do it for you. Hey, Dad! Dad, I just found three more head of cattle in the south line. They're dead. Shot down. What are we going to do about it? I can't tell you just now, Dave, but I think I'll have the answer for us all in a short while. Your Uncle Henry promised to send one of his best men down here to help us out. We've just got to be patient a few more days and keep our shirts on. Keep your shirt on? How oh, in Sam Hill are you going to keep your shirt on when these racketeers grand take it off? That's right, Uncle Joe. We've got to be patient. Patient my eye. I'll be one in a hospital if you don't let me handle this in my own way. Patient? Bah! Well, Dad, I met Mr. Sully on the way over. He, he said some of the men from the Protective Association are coming to see him. He told me to ask you to get over there right away. That might be a good idea. Oh, Mr. Blake, this is my son, Dave. Glad to know you. How do you do? Say, when I was up in the city, I ran across fellows from some of these Protective Associations. I might be of some help to you. Do you mind if I go along? 
Why, sure. It's a good idea. Come right along. Gene, we're going over to Tully. These fellas said they'd be over here about this time. And I'm figuring on paying them what they ask. Any price would be cheap. Or if I keep on losing cattle at the rate I am, I'll soon be washed up. But I tell you, Sully, you can't give in to them and pay off. If you do, they'll just follow through and force us all in. And I'm not going to pay tribute to any gang of racketeers. Well, that's easier for you to say, Tim, than me. You're a big operator and can afford to take the losses heavier and longer. Maybe so, but I can't take them indefinitely. Tell you something must be done about this. But we've got to take it easy. Ha! There you go again. Take it easy. Uh. Well, Sheriff Gallagher said there wasn't a thing he could do unless he caught the men actually in the act of stealing the cattle and killing them. Said he's had his men working on these fellows, but can't put a thing on them. And if I hadn't given my brother Henry my word that I'd keep my temper for a few days, I'd be for grabbing those fellas when they come here today, string them up, and discuss a deal with them later. There! Now you said something. Well, what's your brother Henry got to do with this? Well, he's one of the division heads of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. He promised to send a man down here to help us out. I can't figure out what good one man is going to do us, but I've given my word. But I'm telling you, if that fella doesn't show up here soon, I'm taking the law into my own hands. That's something you can't do, Mr. Hess. Remember, you're not fighting the same conditions that you used to meet up with. Why, these fellas travel in fast cars and airplanes. Why, they can be out of the state in an hour. Well, there's nothing to stop us from grabbing them when they come here. Why, that's more nerve than the old-time cattle rustlers had. We'd have to send out a bunch of hard-riding umbrellas to search the country from one end to the other until we caught them or drove them away. And these fellas have the cross to come right into your house and act innocent. Well, they can't just go out and lynch a man without evidence. Well, ain't my dead cattle evidence enough? 
And how about the two truckloads of my cattle that disappeared? That must be them now. Ah, put them away. This oh. is a social call. What, no music? Put them away. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Hello? Thanks. Uh, are you going to let these farmers, these, these, these yokels, these, these, these cowboys... Boss, this reception is insulting. Now, we're here to sign all you boys up to our protection service. Now, in case some of you don't know what we can do for you, let me say that it is our policy to see that your shipments always arrive safely at their destination. Now, if Mr. Sully here had joined up with us last week when we first approached him, I'm quite sure he wouldn't have lost that shipment of cattle. Just how sure are you that nothing would have happened to Mr. Sully's cattle? We've given protection to members in various industries. Our members always receive the proper protection. And now, if you gentlemen will just sign here, and make out an advance check. You can turn your worries of cattle shipping and losses over to us. Uncle Tim! Uncle Tim! The baby disappeared and I can't find him any place. Well, now take it easy, Gene. We'll find him. Of course, you men wouldn't know anything about this. Meaning just what? Just this. You might get away with this protective racket of yours for a while. But we won't go into that now. Come on, let's get out of here and look for Bobby. Blake's right. Let's get out of here now and find the youngster. This protective business can wait. It can, huh? Well, not as long as you think. We'll give you more time. But in the meantime, if anything happens, just remember, it might have been avoided by signing up now. I think the men understand, and they're willing to take a chance. Oh, yeah? Well, boys, let's teach them a little lesson for standing us off this time. Let's show them how bad they really need our protection. Yeah. You boys drop me off at the shack and then go to work. Okie doke. The only people that may have kidnapped the baby were those racketeers we just left. And I don't think they were any party to this. No? And why not? Because they figured you'd sign up this afternoon. If this had happened after we refused to sign with them, we'd have reason to suspect them. Gene, did you look about the place? He's probably just wandering around. Why, that's impossible. The baby couldn't climb out of that chair. That dog isn't barking for nothing. See what he knows.
<laughs> well, now that we've solved this grand kidnapping mystery, I'd like to look the surrounding country over. I'll go with you. I'd like to go along, but can't you delay your expedition? Uh, not this time, but I'll see you later. Is that a date? There's a nice bunch of old men Hess's cows down there. What do you say? Should we give them a tune? I'm waiting. Play, Don. Find them now, we can certainly send the goods on them. Let's get them. some help to try to stop that stampede. I'll scout around and see what I can find. All right, Mr. Blake, so long. <laughs> that kid's racing to town for no good purpose. <laughs> I'll bet he's seen us. Well, if he did, he won't tell anybody about it.
Take it easy, man. The wing... Here. Oh, that's all right. It doesn't hurt much. You can't waste any time with me. I'll be all right. You gotta get those fellas before they get away. They're living out at the Martin cabin. Well, they must be on the way to town. Are you gonna be all right? Oh, sure. The fall just kind of dazed me. Well, I'll ride out to the cabin and see what I can find out before they get back. Here, you better take this. It might come in handy. Well, it sure might. Gee, I, I hate to leave you here. Oh, I'll be all right as soon as I rest a minute. Just feel a little dizzy. Okay. this hour. You wouldn't mind if we wake him now, would you? No, but if he gets mad, you know what that means. Sure, we know, Dopey. Sweet music. We're apt to get that from the ranchers if we don't watch out. I guess this is yours. Now? No. Time up. Put him in there. Well. Time up and make a good job out of it. Yeah, but boss, you, you can't do this to me. I got a perfect right to rub out a guy what don't mean right by us. Dopey, it has always been your right. The identification card we found on that egg in there changes your rights a little. He happens to be a federal agent. Yeah, murder is murder, but when you put a fed out of the way, you got the whole nation on your neck. Keep your eyes on him, Dopey, while we scram on into town and scare up some getaway dough. Yeah, but boss, what good, what good would I be here without my music if, if I have to let him have it? All right, Don, you stick with him. But remember, no theme song.
on that, I'd like to sell you a little protection. Why not try it? Yeah. 